Okay, you just got your new iPad and an Apple Pencil and this is the right place. Because today I will go through the best note-taking apps that you can get, no matter if it is an iPad mini, iPad Air, normal iPad, iPad Pro, it works for all of them. And I will walk you through the different features that are unique to handwriting note-taking apps. So it makes it easier for you to make the right decision what tool to use in 2022. Which is the handwriting feeling, the different stylus types. And if you watched my video, how to take better digital notes, you know that I'm about leverage the knowledge later on. So I think handwriting to text conversion is a very essential feature that we want to cover as well. Then the drawing capabilities that you have there. Another feature I want to cover is also audio recording and the use of digital journals inside these tools. And the apps we are looking at today are actually six apps. It's Apple Notes, Notability, GoodNotes 5, OneNote, NoteShelf and Nibu. And before we dive into this, I just want to answer the question that I always get in these videos. What is your handwriting note-taking equipment? Well, it is an iPad Pro 2018. It's an older version, but I don't need a newer version because for handwriting note-taking, you don't need the newest iPad Pro. Then I'm using the Sugo case. I showed this already in other videos. I have it in this angle and to me, this is the best handwriting angle. I have the Apple Pencil on top. When it comes to writing, in my opinion, a must have is a matte screen protector. So what I'm using on here is the paper-like screen protector. But now without any further ado, let's dive into this. <laughs> Apple Notes actually is the best note-taking app when it comes to getting access in your Apple ecosystem. So because when I switch off the iPad, I tap on the screen, it will open up a note and I can start writing. And this is just not possible with the other note-taking apps. And the other thing that you have unique to the Apple Notes application is the Quick Notes access. So what this means, for example, I opened up here a productivity guide that you get as a Paper Small member. Let's say you're reading something interesting. It's simply, simply drag and hold, move over there. And now you can tap on this and you see here, new quick note. If I tap on this, it created a new quick note that just comes up down there. And I can draw into this quick note and I can say done. So whenever I want to get this up, I can just swipe it in. And you see, as soon as I bring this in, it actually highlights the text on this website. And it will then become accessible inside your normal notes section. To me, Apple Notes has the best accessibility. It's the same on MacBook. You also have this quick access button and you have the same access on iPhone. The other advantage is that you actually can press and hold. Now I can press plus and I can come down here where it says notes. And now you have notes widgets that you can place there. I can just add this widget on my screen on the iPad and it shows me all the recent notes that I have. So I don't want to go into too much detail because Apple Notes has a lot to offer. If you're interested to dive deeper into Apple Notes, I have an online course for my Paperless Movement members where I deep dive into how to use Apple Notes. So Tom, now that you showed that Apple Notes is so great, why should I actually use other tools? Well, good question. There are many of reasons. Okay, let's start with the handwriting. I opened up the grid so we can compare it in the best way possible. And I will just open up the pen tool in Apple Notes. I have the option here to select the pen and the different thickness and the opacity. We have a highlighter, we have a pencil, which allows us actually to shade. We have an eraser and we have a selection tool and we actually have a ruler in here. I scribbled something down. I, on purpose, don't try to write something fancy here because we want to challenge handwriting to text conversion. So the handwriting is very responsive, that's it. But there is no fancy stylus. And when we go to the other tools, you will see we have a lot more options there. The other downside is that I cannot zoom in, okay? So there's a way you can go to the settings and accessibility and you can have a three tap, double tap, three finger double tap, and then you can zoom in. This is a workaround in Apple Notes, but this is far from optimal. So then we have a highlighter, let's highlight the text. So highlighting is not as easy. So we have to scribble something like this, and then we make a text conversion. So we select this text, we tap on it, and we copy as text, I copy it in here, and this is what comes out. So why is this happening? Let's see, remove the highlighting, and now we select this text again, tap on this, copy as text, paste, and this is a test note. So you see, as soon as you highlight your text, it won't recognize your text anymore. And this is a real issue. So let's go to Notability. Notability, we have a lot more options, sizes, but we can also choose between fountain pen and ball pen. And I love using the fountain pen in Notability. 
and you see already here that we have a favorites bar, okay? So if you're interested how to use Notability in detail, I'm happy to tell you that I'm working on an online course for my Payless Movement members where I will show in detail how to use Notability. So now let's highlight the text as we did before. And you see now I can actually change the size of the highlighter and I can highlight the whole text. The advantage here now is that it stays behind the text already. And now I can use the selection tool, select this, tap on it and say convert. And it gives me already two different options. This wasn't available in Apple Notes. So I can convert it to text or to math. What math means we see in a second. So let's use text and it converts it. This is a test note perfectly. If it would be a different language, I can select it down here. I can actually replace my handwriting with the conversion or I can copy text to clipboard. So if you want to use it in a different tool, you would just copy text to clipboard. In this case, we just test the convert selection and it converts it. You see also that the highlights are gone as well, but at least it was recognizing the text. And now I can just select the text and change even the fonts. I can make it bold and other formatting app options. This wasn't possible in Apple Notes either. So I can select it. I can make it title, heading, subheading, but I cannot change the font style. So just quickly, I want to show you what the math conversion looks like. So let's make a rather complicated for the conversion formula to see if it works. Now we just select this again, tap on it and say convert. And now we convert it to math. And you see it perfectly converts it into proper plain text formula. And this is awesome, I think. Now you can change the size and you can even go in here. And now you can change the formula up here. So let's see how other tools handle this. Let's go into Node Shelf and let's write something so this is a very subjective feeling, what handwriting you like most. All of these apps are very responsive and there's no latency or delay while you're writing. So it doesn't matter which one you use. I know many like NoteShelf, GoodNotes, Notability. It really depends on your handwriting note taking style. So let's see how the highlighter looks. Again, we can change the size of the highlighter and it is not as thick as we had it in Notability, but it works. Now let's select all this and say convert to text. And you see it perfectly recognized the text. So now we can copy to clipboard or we can convert to text box. And then we have some further options. If we click here, now it converted it and it keeps the highlighting. So this is different to Notability. If you want to learn more about NodeShelf, there is already a course that I made for my Payless Movement members. Just go into the membership and you can watch the course about NodeShelf. So obviously there was no conversion to math. So in GoodNotes, I really like the options that I have for the pen styles, all right? I can go for fountain pen, but in addition, I can also change the tip sharpness. You see how it's changing up here when I change the tip sharpness. I like this. And also the pressure sensitivity. Let's write something. Let's go to the highlighter. So let's just go this way. And as soon as I release, it puts the highlighting behind the text, which is great. Now I select the text and tap on it. And now I can say convert. And only thing that we have here is only this text. And now we can go in here and share this text. We could now copy it and paste it in here again. So that's a bit cumbersome. However, there's an advantage actually that we have in good notes. So let's say we have a task manager open and we just want to make tasks out of our handwriting. So all I need to do is select the text. I press and hold and then I drag it over here and it will convert it directly to text. And this is only possible in good notes so far. I love it. So let's see how this looks like in OneNote. So in OneNote, I will use the highlighter again. I will scribble it over. It stays behind the text. I could make this thick in order to make a proper selection here. And now I select this and it looks very strange. And I could now tap on this and there is no handwriting to text conversion. I know that OneNote actually offers handwriting to text conversion, but it is still not available inside the iPad app. And I think this is the biggest disadvantage of OneNote on an iPad. If you're using a Windows Surface or anything like this, then it might work better for you. But this is a essential feature that is missing in OneNote. If you just want to make quick notes and you know that we want to convert this later on on your Windows machine, then this could work for you.
Nibu should show me the best results when it comes to handwriting to text conversion and they have the best implementation when it comes to this feature. Let's write this down. And what you can see here, it actually live converts it on top of it. And the other thing is that I can use the tool very intuitively only using my Apple Pencil. I can strike this through, I can rewrite it. I can actually use a highlighter and select this text and it will highlight the text this way. I can underline the text, it will make it in this color. So this is very intuitive. So I can change this to a title, for example, and now I double tap onto this and it will make this formatting. Now I still can go in there and delete stuff. Or I just double tap on this and say, note. So whenever there's something wrong, I could type on the word on top and I can change to if, you know, if it didn't recognize properly, I can double tap and I can strike through. And you see, you can change the whole thing. I can go in here, make this small, drag it around to a different place. So this is a completely different way to take notes than you would in any of the other handwriting note-taking apps. And I think when you're looking for handwriting to text conversion, that this is the ultimate goal and that you want to use it elsewhere, I think Nebo is the best one to go for if you just want to handwrite very long text and then convert it into a handwritten text later on. Because another big advantage is that you can go here, export, and you can actually convert it to Word documents. You can use it in Word and it will keep the formatting as you see it here on screen. And this is just perfect if you want to further process this. Nebo has a lot of downsides compared to the other note-taking apps, but this is a very strong pro. You also have the option to have math conversions. So you could just go here and, and we make our formula that we had before. I double tap on this and makes X. You see, it just converted it properly. I could now just leave this empty, double tap, and it gives me the result, so it calculates even the formula for you. And the next thing that we can convert are actually diagrams. So I say test one, I made a make a box around this, right? And then I connect these with each other. And now I just double tap and it will convert it into proper diagram. And here again, the advantage is you can now export this into your PowerPoint presentation and these boxes are editable. This is a big, big advantage that you have with Nebo. Now let's talk about drawing. What we saw already that we have a, so I have a pencil and now I can even shade with this pencil. It doesn't look as good as, for example, in Procreate, but it is an advant advantage over the other tools because none of the others allow you shading uh, as you have it here in Apple Notes. So the other thing is what I think is much more important using a handwriting note-taking app and drawing is to draw proper shapes. So let's try to make a shape directly on the grid. There we go. It's not aligned with the grid. I can select it, but that's it. I can drag it around. I can no further edit this shape anymore, so I need to redraw it. What I have is the ruler, but again, there's no snap onto the grid, so I really need to put it there. Then I can draw the line, and you see the line is above the grid. So this is not perfect. In Nebo, you have something called sketch, and in there you can draw very basic, so there's not even a shape recognition. Then in Good Notes, we have shapes. And the advantage of shapes is when you open up the settings here, you can snap to other shapes. You can fill it with color. So let's see how this looks like. Now we have blue, it makes a blue filling. When you change this, if we make this, it will make a green filling. I select this, I can drag it around. I can resize this and rotate, but that's it. It's about the same as for Note Shelf can draw a box, I select the box, I can resize the box, I can rotate it, and we have a shapes tool, so whenever I activate this, I can draw shapes, okay? So then I can select the shape, I can resize it and rotate it, but there's nothing more. Here we have the option that we can select a shape and draw the shape, right? And then when we select the shape later on, we can resize it and drag it around. At least we can change here the dimensions of the shape. And now we come to Notability, where I think Notability is the very best when it comes to drawing. Let me show what this means. So whenever I draw a line and I hold the line, so it makes something like this and I draw, see, it makes an arc. That's It doesn't end there. When you hold, you get a magnifying glass 
and you see it snaps directly to the grid. This is awesome. When you release it, you have even the options to further change the curve afterwards. So it really snaps into place where I need it to be. This is awesome. And it goes further than that. So you can make a rectangle, for example, as well, drag it around and it snaps into place with the grid. See, now we have a perfect square, same here. I can put it into place. And now when we drag it around, you saw it already, See, it shows me the alignment much more advanced when it comes to drawing than you have in any other note-taking app as far I know. And then you can still change things. So if I need to create something very quickly, this is really the best tool to use. So now let's talk about audio recording. In Apple Notes, you can drag and drop your dictionary recordings from Apple into Apple Notes or any other audio files and it will make it accessible this way. This is very basic. The same is for NoteShelf. So for example, in NoteShelf, if I want to have an audio recording, you go to the plus button and then you can say record audio and then I can record something, blah, blah, blah. I stopped the recording and now I have it here. So obviously I could have some notes and then the audio recording is related to this, right? Good notes or Nibu, they don't have this. Notability again brings this to another level. So you can actually activate audio recording by pressing the mic button and it will start recording. And then I stop the recording. And now let's imagine you are writing notes during a lecture or somebody is presenting something. So you see, as soon I open this up, it changes the opacity of the text. And now when I start the recording, see, and it was actually showing me when I was creating these notes. So this means when I am a lecture, I could go now into the position where I started taking these notes and re-listen to what the lecturer or the presenter actually told me. And this is, big advantage that you have in Notability. So when it comes to accessibility, Apple Notes is the best when you use it in the Apple ecosystem. However, it's limited to this. So you have to use the iCloud in order to synchronize it through your different devices. For Notability, GoodNotes and NoteShelf and even Nebo, you can synchronize it with other clouds like Dropbox, G Drive, OneDrive and so on. So this is a big advantage that you can back up it to different platforms as well. And OneNote, well, they only want you to use OneDrive. They're in the Microsoft ecosystem. And this is why OneNote works great. If you're actually using it elsewhere, like on a Windows machine, then OneNote makes really sense. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend this if you're in the Apple ecosystem to use OneNote. I would rather use Apple Notes, the free thing, or one of the other tools that I showed you. So when it comes to organizing your notes, all of them are very basic. Notability and good notes, you have something equal like folders here, but it's the same for good notes that you have something like folders and the same for node shelf you have these structures and folders and so on apple notes has one advantage it uses text so i can write down text inside my note and it would recognize this as a tag and then whenever you're looking for something you can actually search for these tags again and this is a big advantage over other note taking apps if you want to learn more about tags versus folders there's a productivity guide for my paperless movement members as well where i go in more detail about this and now let's talk about digital journals because I know many of you like to use it and it's very important to know how these work in the different note-taking apps. So for example, in Apple Notes, they recently added the support of PDF files and I just added the, my digital journal that you can create on a Papers Movement website into Apple Notes and you see it shows everything. You can actually tap on this and the functionalities are there. I can tap on there, I will jump to this page, I will tap on there, I will jump to the page. The downside, however, is that it is not searchable. So when I put in journal, for example, to search for a word journal, it shows me the word journal. However, it only finds one match. I actually have written on another page. This is a test journal, so it doesn't recognize the handwritten text, only the text that it is converted by the PDF itself. In OneNote, you don't get in PDFs like this at all because there's a limitation to 50 megabytes per PDF. So we cannot import a journal at all into OneNote. Here we are in Nibu. Now you even can import PDF files there. 
but there is no navigation going on and there's no, the handwriting to text conversion doesn't work. The best tools you really should use for digital journaling are Notability, GoodNotes and NoteShelf. These are really the best handwriting note-taking apps when you want to use a digital journal. So this is how it looks in Notability. You can go here and you can just tap on there and we'll jump to the page. You can tap on here and we'll jump to the page. It works great and then I can start writing. And it will recognize your handwriting. So that's the global search. So here's the digital journal and the good notes app. The downside is the best navigation is if you go up here, then you can just tap on these and you will jump through the pages. And then you have to go away from this mode again, and then you can start writing. Um, there's a workaround as well. So you can actually press and hold here, but you have to do this with the finger. So you press and hold, and then you can say open link, press and hold, open link. It's not as easy as on the other tools, I have to say. The other great option is actually NoteShelf. So this is, works very well. I recommend it for a long time to use NoteShelf with the digital journal, but with the new functionalities that we have in Notability, I would personally prefer Notability now. But here again, we can just tap there or we can just use our Apple Pencil. It will jump to the different pages very easily and we can start writing. Okay, this is it for this video. I hope this gave you a bit of an overview. There are so many different features that you might need and others like more and so on. So these discussions are happening inside the Paveless Movement community. You're welcome to join, ask your questions in there and we will figure out the best handwriting note taking app for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so I can catch you up next time. Thank <laughs> you.